Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. What's up? Hey there. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm happy to be here with you today. I too am happy to be here. I have been thinking about something that I'm not sure how to articulate it perfectly. Not that I have to be perfect. But it seems to me lately, I see a lot of people escalating and taking things personally in everyday conversations. More so than it used to be more in the sort of politically charged conversations or conversations about world peace and things. Like, I feel like there's more, I don't know, I don't remember where I was, but I thought I was having a conversation and then I thought instantly, oh, that person is taking that personally and I had no, no intention. Yeah. And I think you said something to me when I was talking to you about it, about, well, but, you know, you're not in charge of other people's feelings. Yeah. And I just, I wanted to chew on that a bit because I think it's a very interesting idea and I think it's also a very unusual idea. It is? Oh, yeah. I think I think so. I think the norm is, I say, you hurt my feelings. You're responsible for X, Y, Z. Do you think people actually believe that? Oh, yeah. I think so. Wow. Is that not normal in your mind? Well, I guess it's normal, but it's oh, not. Yeah. It's definitely not the way. Um, no, I do not think that. I do not think that you are responsible for other people's feelings. Feelings are things that you that you do. They're activities and actions that you take. When you say that, you mean. <clears throat> When you say it's an action I take, if you're mm-hmm. speaking to me, yeah. you're saying something happens and then I feel something. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, maybe when I was younger, I, I experienced it this way, mm-hmm. but I have a visceral memory when I was uh, probably 17 or something like that. I don't know how old I was, but a uh, pretty visceral memory of reading a book that w- at the time was a um, kind of an impactful book for me. It was called mm-hmm. Way of the Peaceful Warrior Oh yeah, by Dan Melnon, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, I, ironically, many years later, like when I was 45 or something, I read it again and yeah. it was not at all impactful. But, it, but when I was 17, it was like the right book at the right yeah, time. The timing, and, you know, The timing was right. Yeah. But um, there's this scene. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but there's this scene in it. And Dan, the guy, the kid in the book is friends with some kid, guy who's friends with another guy who owns a restaurant in town. And he really loves this restaurant. He's all around it. He puts his heart and soul in it. And one day the kid, he's a gymnast and he's jogging and it's nighttime and there's light you know uh fire engine lights and all yeah smoke the whole scene the whole fire the whole yeah. thing right and he's jogging by and it's this restaurant is on fire hmm. right and the owner is standing out front and he runs up and he says oh my god what what's happening you know and and the restaurant's burning to the ground and the owner I'm probably going to tell the story that we're not exactly right because it's uh, an old memory. But but um, the owner kind of goes like freaks out, mm. like has a big freak out, like yeah. anger, frustration, yeah, all that stuff. Screams, yeah. And then he's done with it, and he goes. He turns to the kid. And he goes, the kid says, are you okay? He goes, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I'm going to go travel the world. And I remember reading that, and it was just like, like it, it, something lit up in my brain. And it was like, oh, you, you have total ability to change how you feel about things. You don't have to feel a particular way. You don't have to feel the way people say you have to feel about something. Interesting. And when you're feeling something, if you you can have those feelings, and then once you've had those feelings, once you've let you know out. let them out or however express you want to express them, yeah, then then you can take a completely different trajectory. Interesting. There's a lot in t- in what you just. There's said. a lot in there. Yeah. 
and I and I think that's that to me that's you're having feelings and you're you have agency over those feelings sometimes sometimes the feelings come and you don't have a whole lot of agency but you can have agency in the way you express them mm-hmm. and that can change the agency that you have the more you express them so what what he did was it was going to be very difficult to not feel anything right, right. so he had feelings yes probably didn't have a whole lot of agency in those feelings but he had the agency to express them not hold them in right he expressed those emotions and then he was done with that expression mm-hmm. and then he was able to have a different set of possibilities I see. I mean, there's another, I mean, yes, you can imagine if it were a movie. Yeah. There's another plot, which is he doesn't express them. Yeah. He walks down to the neighborhood restaurant. He's still angry, but he hasn't expressed that anger. He projects it on the next person Bingo. he talks to. That's right. Then that person feels whatever they feel. They project it on the, you know, it's like dominance. That's right. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. We, that's why we have to distinguish between feelings and thinkings. I mean, feelings are like, you know, when we have feelings, it's like a water water in a jar. And we and and if we keep them in, mm-hmm. the jar eventually gets full. Right. And if we don't express them, then we have to let some of that water out. Mm-hmm. And so if we don't have an appropriate place to express them or we don't ever feel that there is an appropriate place to express them, then what we'll do is we'll we'll let a little bit of water out here and a little bit there yeah. and a little bit. And so that's called, proje- you know, projecting yeah. your stuff onto onto life. And, and I think most of what people experience in the world is people just going around projecting feelings that they had about something else on mm-hmm. the current situation or the current conversation, or the current instantiation, right. or the current whatever you're saying to me right now, like, do mm-hmm. you want a coffee? And, I, and all of a sudden, I'm having feelings it. about it, right? So you've got the bottle. And so <clears throat> you have these small ways where you let a little bit of the water out. But mm-hmm. the other alternative is you don't, and then the pressure gets so big that the whole thing oh, yeah. explodes. Yeah. And that's where so, you have really bad big, situations, yeah. right? Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, ideally, we want that to just be empty. And we the want to have an emotion yeah. and then express an emotion and have an emotion and then express process. Emotion. or me- I call it metabolize because you want to metabolize your emotions the same way you want to metabolize your food. Mm-hmm. And I call it metabolize because we don't always want to express, right? That's like, you know, you're, exp- yeah. you're putting out. Sometimes you want to yeah. just metabolize it, right? Meaning process it. Process it in whatever way you w- process way it. You do. Yeah, and yeah. then poop it out. But but you don't always want to vomit it up on things, right? Because then you're then you're kind I of I understand. Then you're expressing on everything and not everybody. Because metabolizing is internal. You're processing it in and then you're letting it out. Yeah, and sometimes and it, it has to be expressed. Yes. Right? And sometimes it just you know, either way, it's metabol. That's why I use the word metabolize. Yeah, but how does that relate to what you said at the beginning of you're in charge of how you feel, and you're in charge of you know how you how you express those feelings? Well, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say literally you're in charge, meaning you're to- you're in total control. Mm-hmm. No, you're not in total control of what you feel. I feel things all the time that I'm not in total control of. Yeah, you know, like for example, predictably predictably as a, a neurodiverse person as an ADD person when I have an exciting weekend or an exciting day or an exciting week yeah right an exciting anything which is like most weeks mm-hmm. right something something is stimulating and I'm having a good time and I'm really into it and all that stuff when that thing ends, Yes. I know what's coming. We all know. There's going to be, because I had the dopamine, Mm -hmm. and then there's going to be a dopamine drop. And so I'll have a bunch of emotion, which when I was a kid, I didn't understand. Right. Right? And and it it was just this weird feeling of, like, everything is low. And that's a biochemical thing. That's because I don't have enough dopamine. Right. And, um, and the... And the contrast between the dopamine mm-hmm. of the exciting events uh, versus the not. So not, even even and when I say exciting, I, I mean dopamine is kind of an interesting mm-hmm. thing. 
I mean, it could be that we had f people over. Yeah. You know, and, and it was an exciting conversation. It was yeah. a stimulating conversation. Yeah. Right? It wasn't boring. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have a drop. Right. Right. And I won't have total control over those emotions, those things that I feel. But now I know and I can be metacognitive because I can use my thinking with my emotions and I can say, oh, you know, this is this is a knowable thing. I'm going to go through mm -hmm. this. I'm going to feel this for a little bit. I just need to feel it. I need to be aware that it really is just a, a, a neurochemical thing. Yeah. And then, and then you don't have any control. And then, yeah. and I probably am not going to have a lot of control over it, but I can metabolize it, right? Now, if I'm not aware, if I'm not using my metacognition on that moment, and you know, this is what happened when I was much younger. Yeah, I can imagine. Then, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, without knowing it. I'm low dopamine, so I need to do something that gets me more dopamine. Yeah. So I'm going to go get in an argument or get I in a, see. or ca cause some kind of chaos or or go do something dangerous mm -hmm. or whatever, so that I can get that get out of that dopamine fog. Or That's lack interesting. Of dopamine fog, that right? gets yeah because that gets to uh, that explains a lot about risk mm -hmm. and stimulation and and why. You sometimes see, for example, teenagers. Teenagers will do things, engage in these risky behaviors like, you know, driving in Jeeps and hitting mailboxes with baseball bats because they're just, they need that dopamine, right? They need that stimulus. They need they need that to fix that dip, and yes. they, but they don't know it. Yes. But what you're saying is you can be, you can use your, <clears throat> your thinking to be aware of your emotions. Your thinking is what helps you metabolize mm -hmm. and in some cases express and in some cases change it into a different form, your emotions. Change it in a different form. What do you mean by that? In the case of in the case of this example I'm giving you, I'm giving this example because I'm just I'm I'm just sharing that sometimes you do have control over what you feel. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's like a chemical, you know, and, and you don't have a lot of control. It's just going to it's going to feel like it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel like it's happening whether you like it or not. And, right. and so some of the way that you think about those things and frame them and, and the perspectives you take, like when I when I realize that I'm just having a neurochemical dip, mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, this is just like literally you just have to ride it out. Yeah, it'll right? change. You don't yeah. have to do anything. You just have to kind of ride it out. Yes. Right? And not only that, I now know cognitively that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so we can plan for it. We yeah. actually do. You, we you do help for plan it. for yes. it with my schedule. Yes. Right? So you know that if, if we have a, a high, then we can't have a nothing on a we Monday, have to we got to schedule else. something, keep right, going. to keep me the yeah. dopamine up. So, yeah. so there's ways you can manage it and mm -hmm. and metabolize it and those kinds of things. Well, that's interesting. But let's talk about the example of when you do have a little bit more control mm -hmm. over yeah. your emotions, because yeah. I think that would be equally interesting to people, right? So, when you're standing in that moment mm -hmm. and you have a feeling, talk talk through that. Like, how do you how do you actually have that control, that agency over it, and what do you do with it? Yeah, I mean, I, again, it's just that it, it really, so much of this comes down to metacognition and awareness. It's like, if you say something, mm -hmm. I mean, you could literally say, you look blue. Okay. Now, I could, I could, that could hurt my feelings. It could. It, mm -hmm. Right? And even our language is so terrible about this, right? That could hurt my feelings. Right. Right. It's not that I'm my feelings are hurt. I understand. Right. It's that that thing is causing the hurt of my feelings. Right. What you said, which means you, you know, you and what you said is causing the hurt. Yeah. The question is, well, why why am I feeling anything about that? Right. right. Is it because I think it's true that I'm blue? Are you actually? Blue? Am I actually blue? Am is I, it bad like, to is, be blue? Is it bad to be blue? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean it. It's probably confusing because blue is a metaphor for this is sad. But I'm just saying, like, okay. if, if somebody called you a jerk, that might hurt your feelings. Yes. But if somebody called you, you know, 
A banana. You're, what? A banana. A banana? Yeah. Like, I think you're a banana. Yeah, I think you're a banana. You'd be like, mm, nope, I'm not a <laughs> banana. So, right? So, so the fact that it's so ridiculously not true mm -hmm. makes it so you don't have any feelings. The fact that somebody says something that might actually have some truth to it, maybe you have some feelings. Well, why are you having those feelings? Because maybe you believe that at least some portion of what that person's saying is true, right? right? Or you feel embarrassed or you feel, you know, whatever. Or you feel that person's just being mean. Or you think they're just being mean. But so if somebody's just right. being mean, then why should that cause you to... Because they're, they're the just, one being mean. They're, they're the one being mean. Right? They're the one that looks bad. So you way. can choose... In those particular situations, you can choose to say, well, if somebody's being mean, why should I feel anything about it? In other words, you reflect it back on them. Right. I, yeah. I, I, I now know that that person's being mean. Mm -hmm. It seems factual. Maybe I check in and I find out, oh, yeah, they did mean, they, they did intend to be mean yeah. in that particular situation. Mm -hmm. And so why, why would I feel anything about that? Interesting, because I think a normative response to that would be, oh, but they're trying to hurt my feelings, right? And so then they have a reaction. Maybe it's even not even the reaction to what they're saying to hurt your feelings, but it's just, oh, they're trying to hurt my feelings and therefore my my feelings are hurt, which is, why, why would it's you a weird, that? it's not it logical. I understand it's not logical, but a lot of people, a lot of people don't, don't associate logic with emotions. But it's not, I mean, it's not really logical. It's, it's, it's about what would, what possible benefit and wh why are you so easily controlled? That's a good way to think about it. Right? Like, yeah. why am I so easily controlled that if someone is mean, mm -hmm. that I suddenly have all these feelings about it? Right. Like, don't I have any choice in the matter? Like, they, if they're mean, I feel. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Right? Yeah, what, no, why, yeah. why don't I have any choice in the matter? Because that means if, if, if it's just an if-then statement, right? If they do this, if they say this, if they feel this, if they, you know, whatever. Right. Then I feel. Right. So there should be a step in between. Yeah, it should be, there should be some agency. <laughs> some of, step, yeah. Of, I get to have some choice in the matter. Yeah. And again, we already talked about the issue of there are some yeah, cases where you don't have choice, like in, in chemical yeah, yeah. changes in your body and stuff like that. But but when it comes to like, you know, daily social interaction. daily interaction yeah. and conflict, like you get to have some choice in the matter. You don't have to feel like if just not that you ever make bad food because you're a very good cook. But like say you said, hey, I made some chicken and I go, this tastes terrible. Well, you could take that personally, personally, yeah. and you could be like, "He doesn't like my cooking," and blah blah blah, and yada yada. But, or you could be like, "Oh, let, let me taste it. Let me see. Yeah. Like maybe it does taste terrible, right?" Yeah. <laughs> well, remember the shrimp. Cake. The shrimp. So, There's one meal that you made that was terrible. And I made was, shrimp cakes. I forgot to take the tails off. Yes. So I ground them up, into... and then you could taste little yeah. tiny pieces. They were crunchy. They were crunchy. But not in a but good let's, way. So let's replay that moment. <laughs> yeah. So I had it at that moment when you said these don't taste good. It wasn't right. just me. It was everybody at the table that when they bit into it, there was a, cr a noticeable crunch. And it wasn't because of the way it was. It wasn't an intentional crunch. It wasn't crunch. an intentional <laughs> crunch. It was like a very odd crunch. Yeah. So in that moment, I could have been like, they don't appreciate me. They don't, you know, they don't appreciate my cooking. Yeah. And I could have taken it completely personally and yeah. and spun off into a whole thing. Or I could have been like, oh, they are crunchy. <laughs> I wonder why they're crunchy. Why are they crunchy? And then I could back back end into, oh, I, I messed up the recipe. Yeah. And then that's just, that's just feedback. Yes. It's just feedback, and feedback isn't personal. Feedback that's is just right. feedback. Yes. But that's that has to happen very quickly well, in, in order to not react. that's why metacognition is important, and that's why being fast at metacognition is important. Because, you know, even if some let's, – let's put it this way. Let's say someone is actually mean. They intend to hurt you, mm -hmm. and they say something that's also actually true. Ooh. Do you have the metacognition not to get mad about the mean part – 
and to accept the true part. That's hard. No, it has to have it doesn't to have to be hard. If you, it, it's yeah. hard to shoot a basket and make it into a net. But if you practice, it, you, can do, you it. can do it. So you're saying if I if if a person practices separating out um, the truth versus the not truth of the comment or the intention versus the well, the, what you're what you're actually practicing is not taking it all all or none. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. That you're able to separate. Okay, this this part is just the mean part, and I'm going to leave that part. Mm -hmm. And this part is actually kind of interesting feedback. I'm going to take that because I, I actually kind of there's reasons to think that some of what they're saying is true here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to take that and I'm going to better myself, but I'm going to leave that part for them because that has nothing to do with me. Right. Their need to be mean, their need to hurt me. That has very little to do with me and far more to do with them. And they need to process And they, they can't, well, they will or can yeah. or whatever, but it's just not my, that's not it's my not thing. your responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. But I can take that feedback and do something valuable with it. And so say you get feedback and there's part of it's true and part of it's not. I you can, can separate you that can separate also. That. Yeah. I so, can say, here's the nugget that's yeah. true. And here's the nugget that I just... I don't need to consider because I know it's factually right. not true. But we take everything that, that people wants. say as a whole mm -hmm. and we can't break it into parts and be like, oh, well, I, like think of it. If you gave me if I was really, really hungry mm -hmm. and you gave me like a hamburger that had olives in it or something. And let's say I did not like olives. Yeah. Well, does that mean I'm going to throw out the hamburger? No, I, I'm, I'm going to pick the olives out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, well, the same same thing with feedback of some kind right mm -hmm. like if there's a part of it that you're kind of like nah mm -hmm. that's not for me okay just take it take it apart and that diffuses the whole thing because you're able to be you're able to be um thoughtful about that piece which is useful versus a piece that is maybe just not true or or out of spite or something and it's 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 designed to have an effect yes and and you can separate those things out and that's that's an example of somebody that's like intending to be mean. Most of the time, I don't think yeah. like most people aren't intending to be mean. They might just be like saying something. And well, that's what they, I was saying at the beginning. Is I see these everyday conversations, and people seem sort of quick to to respond in a way. But the point is, let's put it this way: if you have an emotion mm -hmm. about whatever it is that they're saying or doing. Mm -hmm. The chances are that that emotion has more to teach you about yourself than it has to do with what that person said or did. Okay, I want you to say that again because that's pretty smart. The chances are it has more to do with... Teaching you about yourself mm -hmm. than it has anything to do with what that person did or said. I love that. It has more to do... It, it, it can do so much if you pay attention to it of teaching you about yourself. Interesting. So if you're paying attention to the when you're having emotion and why you're having emotion and what what thing, what mental model do you create prior to the emotion that causes the emotion, then you will learn so much more about yourself. Yeah. And then you'll be able to remedy that thing and no longer will that be the case. You will no longer have those feelings when those things happen. The more you know yourself, yeah. the more in control you are Yes. in those moments where you don't have to react to everything. Yes. And the more aware you are of, of how to handle all kinds of situations because you understand, you know, your patterns and, you know, you, you understand yourself. Yeah. Imagine, like, imagine a person and imagine you could put, like, you know, big two by fours through them without killing them right <laughs> yeah you know so you're what you have this person that's walking around with all these two by fours sticking out of them right yeah and then you s s tell them to walk down the street of a busy street yeah right and what's going to happen well the, the people are going to knock into the two by fours and they're spinning you around and then the, and somebody else while you're getting spun around is going to hit another one right. you're going to get you're constantly going to be just out of control 
Because you're always react, you're always being moved. You're always being moved. Yeah. You have no agency of your direction and your vector because you're just, you're bumping into people and they're not meaning to bump into you. They're just walking down the street, but yeah. you've got all these two by fours sticking out of you. Yeah. Imagine if every time you have one of those two by fours, you learn and you go, oh, I can, I can just take that one off. I can take that one off. And eventually you rid yourself of all these two by fours. Yeah. And you can move through life with such agility right. because and fluidity you're yeah. because you're not constantly being affected by everything. Yeah. And you're not in a passive or reactive yes. state at yes. all times. Right. Right. You're in it. You're in a more, you have agency. You're more in an active right. action-based um, space. So what we want to do is try to get to the point where we don't have any buttons. Yeah. Right. That there are no buttons. Meaning there are no things that easily bother you. Yeah. That you react to immediately. And because because you process, why is it that I feel that way? Why is it that I, you know, when when this happens, why do I respond this way? Why do I act this way? Why do I feel this way? And buttons, it seems to me, buttons are. Buttons are the two by fours or whatever. They're yeah, but they're, they also metaphor. sometimes prob they probably come from faulty mental models totally. from way back. Way back. And you're sort of carrying them with you. Absolutely. You know. And you're letting out a little bit of that yeah. water. I mean, this is the worst mixed metaphor. So we've got two <laughs> by fours and buttons and Waters. water jars. But, but, you know, every you, you're you're desperately trying to let a little bit of this water that you've built up out. Yeah. Right. And so you're like, well, oh, this is as good a time as any. Somebody just said, you know, my shirt is blue. Yeah. <laughs> You what? know, and vo a little bit of vomit there, a little bit of vomit there. And, and then pretty soon the whole world's vomiting on each other. And, and, and that's what it's like being out in the world today is everybody is feeling a lot yeah. about everything. Mm -hmm. And that's true. I think we need to go in the other direction, which is like, l let's try to let's try to build a human. You know, like build a bear workshops, the, the build a bear where you, yes. like your whole job in life is to build a really good human, mm -hmm. make a bunch of mistakes and build a human. That's our job in life. Build a really good human as, as good as you can make yourself. Yeah. And, and, and so like, let's try to build a human that doesn't react to everything. That let's try to build a great. human that doesn't have feelings every time somebody says something. Yeah, that, and you can, that has some agency around how they respond, and and uh, you can imagine the downstream effects of that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I mean, it Good would be amazing. Yeah. That would be happy, mind blown emojis by a thousand. I mean, that would be a totally different landscape. So there's a couple of things that we can that we can hit on here in terms of mental models yeah. that might be helpful. Right. The first one is is the idea that. Um, we call this the the uh, uh, the R quad. R quad, mm -hmm. the relational quadratic. So quad just being four things. So you've got two things that are going to have a relationship. So the, you have two things that have a relationship. So there's the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. The pen. But w what we want to do is see that relationship in a quad, mm -hmm. right? And so let's do the paper here. So we got two two people, let's say, and then there's this relationship. But we wanna we wanna think about it as a quad. So there's there's the action, and there's the reaction, right? Mm -hmm. And those are related. And then there's the action and the reaction, right? And those two are related, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, so what you're saying is you got two thing two things two let's people, say people who yep. are related and they're interacting. And each one has in him an action and a reaction. Right. So this person says this and then you yes. think or feel this and then you say this and then they think or feel this and So maybe to visual it's more like there's an exchange. There's an exchange between two. But people. we want to blow that exchange up yep. into four things. It the action and the reaction way. and the action yep. and the reaction. Okay. That's that's the R quad. And then what we want to do is actually think about the internal relationship between our reaction and our action. So we want to build a little square out of this thing, right? Yeah. So we can draw like like yeah. we draw a square and put the four yeah, the quad here, right? 
Does that make sense? Yes. So, so here's the reaction mm -hmm. and then the reaction. And what we want to do is think about this relationship that's internal. This is all happening inside the person. This relationship and this relationship between your reaction and your chosen action. Meaning at that moment, we do actually have some control over do we act or do we react to another I don't, Yeah, I don't love the word control. Sorry, I use choice. The word agency. Agency. Right? Yeah. So we have some agency, meaning we have some, some control. It's not total control. You don't have total control over no, anything. No. But you have some agency. You have some influence. Mm -hmm. That What we don't always want is for your reaction to be your immediate action. For, for a lot of people, their reaction is their action, mm -hmm. right? So you say something, I feel something, I tell you that yeah. feeling, right? Mm -hmm. We want there to be a little bit of space between your reaction and your action mm -hmm. where you have some agency. And if we open that up and, and think and just pause, have a metacognitive pause yeah. in there on both sides, this conversation is going to go completely different. Because each person in that conversation is taking a literally a moment to think about how they're going to respond before and they respond. And take some ownership, of uh, agency their of their reaction. Yes. Their, their, their reaction is not owned by the other person. Mm -hmm. And yet it's blamed on the other person. Yeah. Right? Their rea your reaction, my reaction is not owned by you. Mm -hmm. And yet... I blame it on you. That's interesting. Right? My reaction is my reaction. Mm -hmm. But you're going to blame me. But I'm going to blame you for And it. I'm going to blame I you feel this I'm way because, because, mm -hmm. because the cause of my feelings is you and what you said. And that is just patently absurd and untrue. Right. The cause of your feeling is a web of causality that probably has a lot more to do with you than with with the person. Right. And it has a lot more to do with whether or not I have that ability to take that metacognitive moment and and mm. be thoughtful about how I'm yes. going to respond, react, or act. Right. I don't know when this happened. Maybe, it, maybe it, I don't know when. It, maybe it's always been this way. I don't know. But it definitely feels like we've moved into a world where if you say something and someone in the room feels something, you're responsible for that feeling. We have definitely moved into that world. Yeah. And that is just not the case. No. And it's, it's very difficult. It's very dysfunctional. And yeah. it's it's kind of become globally dysfunctional. That mm -hmm. that if if because what it means is if if there's a hundred people in a room, mm -hmm. there's a high probability that almost anything that I say could offend one of them. At least one. At least one. Right. Right? Which means that now, now take a hundred people. If if I can't say anything that's going to not offend anyone, then I can't say anything. That's right. And that's not a good. That's that. Those are not good statistics. Well, it means that we have to learn to communicate with each other, and it means exactly. Well, it means we have to not. React. It means we have to take some ownership of our own and agency of our own emotional state and our own reactionary state yes because those are ours and we need to stop blaming them on other people because there's a web of causality came into it now i'm not saying that it's not real that the emotions aren't real mm -hmm. you know that you don't have a right to those emotions and all of that stuff you right. can do whatever you want to do but blaming it on another person your emotion and your reaction on another person is a dysfunctional way to be in the world. Right. And it, it's going to make it so nobody can get along and nobody can talk. We're getting there. You've got, you've got to be able to take some responsibility and accountability and agency and ownership or whatever you want to call it for how you feel. Yeah. And I think that goes back to what you said earlier is I need to purposely metabolize my own emotions mm -hmm. and then be out in the world and make sure that I'm having these moments where I'm checking, am I just reacting to react or 
what what am I feeling that I need to metabolize before I project it on the next person right. and and make sure that I'm taking accountability for myself yeah. in that sense, emotionally. My, like you said, my emotional state and my emotional responses to people. So another one is called feelings and thinkings. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this is one that we could do a whole episode just on this. Maybe we will. Uh, we could do a whole episode just on that, on, on our quad. Yeah. But feelings and thinkings is really important because it basically is about how feelings have a structure. Right? Yeah. And thinkings have a structure. Okay. And that structure is I... So this is I feel, let's say X, Mm -hmm. and this is a period. This is a period. I feel X, period. Meaning that's the end of the statement. I feel X. I feel X, period. Okay. Okay. And thinking is I think, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say Y. Mm Mm-hmm. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Like ellipse. Right. right? Meaning there's more to that. There's more. more, I can say lots more, Mm -hmm. right? Now, here's the important part. According to the science, different scholars will argue with you how many things are in X. But generally speaking, there's something on the order of 12. 12 possible things can be in X. 12 emotions. 12 emotions. Humans have, generally speaking, 12, 12 16 whatever it's a small number it's a limited it's set. a very limited set right, right? Mm-hmm. so that includes sadness you know frustration happiness. envy happiness anger you know blah 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 yeah. right but it's a small set yes of things that you can feel mm-hmm. right and we just want to accept them as feelings i i feel it is a fact that i feel x mm-hmm. okay i feel x i don't have to go on that's why the period, period. I yeah. feel X, period. I don't have to explain why. I don't have to justify it. I just, that's what I feel. Mm-hmm. I feel. Yes. So the agency tells you right there in the sentence, I feel X. Right. Period. Right? Not because of you or whatever, yeah. just I feel X, period. Mm-hmm. And then you can sit with the feeling. Yes. Now, I think, why? Well, how many things can go inside a Y? Well, you mean the variable Y? Yeah, the variable Y. Yeah. Well, there's an infinite number of things that I can think. Yeah. Right? There's a universe of There's things. a universe of things. So mm-hmm. th- that's the real a huge difference is this is thinking, this is feeling, this is, you know, 8 to 16 things. Yep. This is an infinite number of things that you can think. Mm-hmm. And dot, 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 because yeah. also... Whatever. I can go on and on and on. Right. Right? But I don't do that with feelings. I feel X, period. Right. I think Y, dot, dot, dot. Now, think about common conversation. I feel like you were mean to me. (laughs) Right. I feel like you're being a jerk. Right? We use the manipulation of feelings in conversation well, and we interchange the words without any thought. Exactly. I mean, my favorite professor in college when I would write papers would say, you don't feel this policy X, Y, Z. No. You, you think, think. Yes. Right. You right. think that. And that distinction was important. Right. So you can't really say, I feel anything but these 10 or 15 things. There's a limited set. There's a very percentage. limited set of emotions that we have. Right. Limited meaning it's not infinite. It's a, right. it's a small set. It, we could argue whether it's eight, Doesn't sixteen, matter. but it's whatever. Limited. It's a it's a limited set, mm-hmm. right? Depending on which meaning side emotions are different than thoughts. Emotions are constrained by this set. Yep. And thoughts are in. And and we often will say, you know, I feel this. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because we we know that feelings are going to take be taken more seriously. Right. And so we make our thoughts sound like feelings. Right, which is a manipulation. It's also because we confuse feelings and thinkings. I think that's true. Right? Yeah. And so this 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 will help people understand that I the the sort of algorithm of a feeling is I feel X period. 
You don't have to justify it. You don't have to. All you got to do is feel it. Sit with it. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to blame it. You can just say, I feel frustrated. And then I'm going to ask you why. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> right. And why why is that? Because we're always wanting a cause of the feelings. Yeah. But you know where the cause is? It's, yeah. It's in the eye. Yeah. The cause of the feeling is the eye. Mm-hmm. I feel. Right? Yeah. And we always ask, why, why are you feeling this way? Yeah. Well, how about we just stick with your feeling that way? And then... Let you feel it. And then we can talk about, well, what are what are some of the mental models that are, are mm -hmm. you know, leading to this, which is I, that's you with your mental models yeah. leading to that feeling. Yeah. I mean, and this happens a lot like with the kids, right? So I feel sad. And, and if you and if you stop and you say, OK, I'm going to sit here with you while you feel sad. We're mm -hmm. going to feel sad together and then we're going to talk about it. After you've felt it, yeah. because once you've felt it, then you have the ability to be, well, you can think about it more clearly. And which one, do you, which conversation do you think is going to go faster? I feel sad and you sit with the person in sadness right. and then talk about it. Or I feel sad and you go, why? And then you start analyzing it and, mm -hmm. and the person never actually ends up feeling sad. Or they, or they feel and they, they conflate, or they conflate the feeling the and the thinking, and then there's a mess and they can't sort right. it out. Exactly. And then they say, oh, I think Johnny hates me. Right. Then you can, you, can, you can interrogate, well, what are the facts that Johnny hates you or doesn't hate you? You can be, I don't want to say rational, but you can be more thoughtful in, in whether or not that's an accurate mental model. And it's right. the mental model that that preceded the feeling. That's right. Right. Because I thought Johnny hated me, period. And I felt sad. Right. So you have to you have to say what's the thought that preceded the feeling. I think Johnny hates me. Dot dot dot. Yeah. Because he did, he did this and yeah. he did that and he did that and I saw this and then he said this mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. And the thought can get quite complex. Yes. But I feel sad. Yeah. Period. But not, I feel Johnny hates me, which we do all the time. Yeah, but it's right. Like, yeah. I feel like the other day you did this. What? Right. You felt that? Because that's not a feeling. That's right. <laughs> right. And and I guess the point is you have to feel the feeling. You yes. need to feel the feeling. You, you need to metabolize, metabolize the, the feeling. feeling. And then you can trace back what is the thought or the mental model that preceded that moment. Yes. Then you can go back and test that mental model's veracity. If it is it real? Yes. And that's how you keep them separate, and that's how you. Right, and this can happen kind of in a nonlinear way, right? Because if I have a, a reaction which is, oh, she thinks I'm stupid. I, you know, she's talking down to me, mm -hmm. and I have a feeling, like of of I'm mm -hmm. feeling, you know, angry or something. Well, I can say to myself, well, how do I know she's talking down to me? Yeah. Is she? You don't. But, uh, you don't know. And I, and then I could ask. Yeah. Hey, do you mean, are you meaning to come off in this way? Because and I, I say no. you know, And you'd say no. And I would. I and then all of a sudden I would dissipate that thought and that dissipate that feeling. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what I mean by metabolize. I don't always have to be angry. What I have to understand is what what is leading me to feel this feeling, mm -hmm. and is there any validity to that men, that thinking that I had? Right. Exactly. That's leading to the feeling. Yeah. Right. Because right. the thinking is might be completely flawed. Yeah, and that just taking that moment and asking that question is what facilitates an actual communication. Yes. And facilitates actual understanding. Yes. Because we're choosing not to react. We're choosing right. to take a moment and and act instead of react. Which is but I think we've gotten to the point where we're now we're now having feelings just to express our identity and things like that. Mm. We're having feelings so that it gives us an opportunity to say things that we want to say about ourselves. Say more. If if you feel like you're not seen, mm. like let's say I I'm uh you know I don't know. Let's say I'm a really great horseback rider. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just like one of the best. But I don't get any accolades for being a great horseback rider. Yeah. But it's important to me that I'm I'm a good horseman. It's part of who you are, in yeah. your opinion. I'm just making this up. I'm I know. not a good horseman. But, you know, let's say it's important to me that, that I'm th- this, you know, horseman. And, and, and you say, hey, you know, I don't know where this example's going, but, but, you know, look at those, that beautiful farm. Yeah. And I go, well, that farm's not that beautiful. It doesn't have horses. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of frustrated. Mm-hmm. How could you say that about that farm? Because your identity is because my identity is so I'm trying to get to horse I'm trying to get to a place where you recognize that I'm good at horses. Right. So I'm gonna take any opportunity to triangulate and get it back there. Yeah. So that you'll see me. Right. Instead of just sharing with you, hey, I love horses. I horses are amazing. I love them. I I love riding them. I want to talk about them all day. I'm I'm just autistically horses. Share your idea. You know, and I love horses. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I'm going to share it with you. Yeah. Instead of creating situations where creating situations where you get to uh, feel like you're proactively setting forth who you are and what your identity yes. is. You're setting for, in other words, you're, you're creating conversations that allow you to express that rather than just saying... This is who right, I'm. and if I do it by manipulating emotion, yeah. then it makes it so that you can't say no, right? Right, because because you have to take my emotion seriously, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So if I'm upset about your comment, your innocuous comment about the farm, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you're like, why? Whoa, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, yeah, say that about the farm. Did did that uh, offend you? Yes, it's very offensive that you think. Cow farms are better than horse farms. <laughs> and you're like, how did we get here? But we're doing that saying. with all kinds of things yeah. that surround our identity, right? Yeah. So then then it's very important for us to show our identity rather than just sort of saying, hey, I'm really excited about my identity. Yeah. I'm re- we, can't, we don't have the courage or the yeah, bravery to sort of that. say that. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm really excited about horses. I love horses. I mean, anything okay. horse, I love. You know, like I'm a nerd about horses. Yeah. I'm ridiculously into horses. Right, right. And I want you to like horses too because I love horses so much. Well, yeah. And, and to get angry at you for liking cows is a little bit silly because then they're not recognizing your identity of like but again i'm not getting angry at you for liking cows i'm getting i'm yeah i'm utilizing emotion Mm -hmm. to make it so that i can be seen yes instead of just being instead of just showing myself Mm -hmm. instead of showing up i'm utilizing emotion to to sort of flex my identity well so we started this with the whole idea that that you know we're in a place where people t- take things personally we conflate emotions and thinking you know all the time and i i think <clears throat> you know if, if i were listening i would you know i would want to remind myself that it's that moment of thoughtful pause or metacognition that allows you to be choosing yes you know do you see them as separate <clears throat> and can you don't conflate yeah Distinguish, exactly. do the opposite of conflate, Keep and going. relate. Yes. So we don't want to conflate, we want to relate. And in order to relate these two things, we have to distinguish them. First, yeah. Right? So don't conflate them, which is they're all the same. Yeah, that's just a mess. But distinguish them from each other so that you can see the differences between them, the beautiful differences between them. Yeah. And then relate them to see how, oh, how, how is my thinking leading to this emotion? And then have some agency in the whole process because here's the part that's amazing and and this is the the silver lining to all this if you take agency if you take responsibility for your feelings you will suddenly have so much agency in the world yeah that's right you will be so empowered Mm -hmm. you will have so much control that you've yeah. never felt before. Yeah. 
You know, all these feelings of being out of control, suddenly you'll have all this control mm -hmm. because you'll have control of yourself. Yep. You'll pull those two by fours in and you won't be getting knocked around so much. Well, and you'll be able to choose what direction you go with ease and you'll move fluidly, right? With and less you suffering. will have with less suffering, with, with less, less suffering. getting banged up. Yeah, it's hard. You will have agency, you will have control, you will be empowered. Mm -hmm. And all of that comes from just taking a little bit of ownership mm -hmm. of that reaction yeah. instead of saying, my reaction is your fault. Right. As soon as you do that, the devil in that bargain yeah. is that you're giving away yeah. the most amazing agency that you possess which is the agency to choose how you feel, when you feel, what you think, how, you know, all of that. Yeah. And you're, as soon as you start blaming other people for how you feel, you're giving it all away. Yeah. It's like you're just giving it all away. Well, then you just exist in a reactive state. Yeah. And not an active state. Well, and, and, and you're disempowered. You are disempowered. You're disempowering Because yourself. you're at everybody else's mercy. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. And you don't realize your own strength and your yeah. own empowerment and your own agency, your own ownership, and all the power that comes with that. And if we all did that, then we would actually communicate with one another in a very functional way. Be a cool world. It would be a great world. It's a cool, cool world after no, all. No, it's no, no. We're not going to end on that. What is that from? Disneyland or something? It's a small it's world. world. I know, but I made a different song. It's called It's, it's a, a Cool, cool world. world. But it's a different world. <laughs> So uh, anyway, I think this has been very interesting. Like or subscribe or else. No. And if you feel threatened by that, take accountability. Mm -hmm.